Alright, it's about time we put an end to this. We're just about at the final stretch. Just gotta go through this final area that's blowing wind. And it's hard to see. God, this is annoying. <laughs> this is probably my least favorite area of the game of form because it's so hard to see anything. Mostly because it's hard in some cases. But yeah, this isn't... This is really annoying. But soon enough, we're gonna get to the end of this area and... Once we do... Uh, we'll have some time to talk. Uh, we'll see pretty much where my biggest problem with this game uh, kicks in. I won't have too much time to explain it now, but I'll have more time to explain it later. But also, we'll finally learn Dust Origins. So something to look forward to once we get out of here. There's a little bit of treasure to, fi uh, to find. And all you gotta do is fall down the cliff. Well, as soon as I do it. Not here, but... Yeah, not here. But uh, I go back down because there is a crevice down there, but you can't slide down there because it's above you. So... Yeah, you gotta run against the wind and it's so annoying. I'm not sure if turning off the water effects would change anything, but yeah. Just keep dash jumping and you'll find a chest. And open it up, and there we go. Mountain gear, which I can't make because I for. Don't wait. Uh, yeah, I'm missing a piece of equipment. Am I missing? I need to. S I mean, I need to sell it. So I just keep climbing. And just keep dash jumping because Jesus Christ, this wind is so annoying. Yeah, this this is kind of boring. This last stretch is kind of annoying, mostly because the wind just keeps interfering and just hinders progress. But yep. Yeah, We've made it to the top. Ah, hello again, my friend. I suspected you would return. You know, I expected him to say something now that we're at the top, but... Eh. Whatever. Just gonna go sell my materials that I have. Your transaction... Watch your and... Back, my friend. Here we are, the peak of the mountain. There, there was a road here. I remember it before that day. Apparently, dust memory is starting to come back. Look up ahead, a village. All the way up here. Do you think it's that Moonblood camp Kane was talking about? No, it's something else. It's... En enough talking. Let's get up there. An abandoned playground. HALT! What? No. Impossible! Cassius! What did you call me? Who are you? What are you doing in this place? You... you were dead! No, no, this is not possible. 
I don't know what demon you are, but you will not step any closer. Kill this thing. Okay, so boss fight, quote unquote, just two soldiers, and there's nothing to really break home about. Just use magic to kill them, and that'll be the end of it. Why? Why destroy such a peaceful place? We didn't want any of this. Gus, what are you talking about? And who is Cassius? That's not... It's not my name. I'd remember it. I'd know it when I heard it. Yeah, it looks like those soldiers have been seeing the ghosts. Because apparently... Dust color scheme and character looks familiar to them, apparently. And this village is blown to hell. God damn. Looks like this place has been destroyed for quite some time. A year, actually. Huh? How do you know that? Okay, at this point in time, something happened to the scene here. It kind of just froze in place and they wouldn't move forward. So I just... I tried to mess around with it, to do manual advance, and then I just decided to say screw it. Although it seems that dust is starting to This place looking familiar to him. This house. Do you re remember something, Dust? This is impossible. Apparently he recognizes his house. Dust? How? Do you see now? But how, Ara? I don't understand. The answers lie above, Dust. Well, let's head into this room. And... Here we go. Ginger, she was sleeping right here. On the night I came to say goodbye, but I hesitated. I didn't want to wake her, didn't want her to worry about me. She couldn't know what I was about to do. Dust, what are you saying? She couldn't know that I was about to go avenge our parents. You mean, you're... but how? What's going on here? I... I remember now, but how? How can I have helped destroy this village, but be a victim of that same act? That's impossible. Only impossible for a creature with a single soul. Ginger. Those eyes. I know those eyes. So, Mithrarin, you finally see the truth. Who are you? I am Elder Grey Eyes, leader of the Moonblood people. Well, what's left of them, that is. What did you mean just then, that I can finally see the truth? What do you know about me? His eyes, Elder. They are Jin's eyes. They do look remarkably similar to your brother's, yes. That is because his soul lives on within dust. What? However, to suit our needs, we required two souls. The soul of innocence is a noble thing, but without skill, without power, dust would have been struck down just as easily as your brother was on that fated day. No. So we combined your brother's soul with that of his murderer, the royal assassin known as Cassius. They perished at the same time, forever entwined. Never before had I heard of such an event. You murderer! My parents did nothing wrong! You have been deceived, little one. Your parents turned against their king in acts of pure treason. What resistance there was, was led by your family alone. You destroyed my village, murdered my friends and family. You will not survive this day! I 
I take no joy in slaughtering one as young as you, child. But you have forced my hand. A grave injustice was done that day. Cassius murdered a defenseless djinn, but his pride and arrogance proved to be his undoing. But how? How can this... this thing be my brother? It's not possible. I couldn't even remember you when we met. You are Jin, yes. But you are also Cassius. Two souls, forever at odds. One of innocence, one of power. Together you form the one we call Mithrarin, he who is born of the dust. I never knew what happened. Jin just disappeared one night. I had always hoped he would turn up alive someday. That he would come back. But... Could you really be him? Ginger... I don't know. I... I don't know. Now, Dust, I imagine you have many questions. Please, do not hesitate to ask them. Who, or I guess, what am I? You are what my people call Sen Mithrarin. He who is born of the dust, created from the essence of the life thread itself. You see, my people have been on the verge of extinction for a great many years. General Gaius planned to eradicate us once and for all. And while our warriors are proud and strong, what chance would we have against such a powerful foe? To defeat General Gaius and save our people, we would need a warrior capable of standing against an entire army. This warrior would also need to be pure of heart, incorruptible. So that's why you picked Cassius and Jin, just like you said, opposites. Exactly. Cassius was one of the greatest warriors this world has ever seen, and Jin's purity of heart would help guide our warrior to save our kind. From their fallen souls, you were born. Born to save us. To save this world. Why did I only remember now? I didn't even recognize Ginger when I met her. You may possess the souls of two separate beings, but your body and mind are your own. You were created to save this world, so we felt giving you memories of either soul would simply distract you from the task at hand. I had no idea who I was, what my purpose was. You say that, but in all cases you did exactly what we intended you to do. You saved complete strangers outside of Aurora Village. You stopped our wayward brother Fuse from destroying all that we sought to save. You saved Mudpot and brought the waters of life back into this land. You purged a demonic rage from this land, and even helped two old souls find peace once more. You may not have known your purpose, but that did not stop you from fulfilling it. And now I'm here. Yes, now you are here. And we can finish this fight once and for all. Who was Fuse? He said he was a Moonblood, but he looks nothing like you. Fuse. He was once a fine warrior, and a close friend of Ginger's family. He would help transport goods between this village and our camp. After the village was destroyed, I guess he lost his mind. He was horribly disfigured after the attack. The only way he could survive was in a special suit of magical armor that I helped to construct. He demanded we attack General Gaius right away, but I would not hear any of it. He would have killed us all in the name of vengeance. We would not have stood a chance. When I refused to send our warriors into battle, he called me a coward and vowed that he would destroy Gaius with or without my help. I fear the very armor we made to save his life had corrupted his mind and body beyond repair. Poor guy. If only we could have gone through to him somehow. No, you were right to kill him. If he had remained alive, there's no telling what damage he could have done. Ginger is right. Fuse was beyond saving. For all our sakes, 
I hope the same is not true of the world he sought to protect. How does the Blade of Ara fit into all this? What is it, exactly? It is one of the five blades of Elysium. Ancient weapons forged when our kind were many, and the way of the flameless light was commonplace. Wait, wait, wait. What the heck is the way of the flameless light? A path we Moonbloods continue to follow. It is a way of living, a way of thought, that allows us to make use of a power both old and great. Magic without magic. I am so confused. Surely, as Nimbat Sword Guardian, you've studied the ancient doctrines. You must know, in the event that the sword is summoned by its rightful owner, you are obligated to follow. I may have skipped over that chapter? You haven't answered my question. The blades of Elysium were created to guide their sword bearer's dust. I was summoned to your side to ensure our balance was maintained between the souls within you. Ah, my old friend. It is good to hear your voice once more. It has been a long time, Master. Wait just a second. How can you possibly know each other? My clan's been keeping the sword hidden for over 200 years. Master Grey Eyes has lived for a very long time, Fidget. Longer than any of you. So you were sent to keep an eye on me? To help you reach your true potential. Nothing more. I have no more questions. What now? You must join us in the Moonblood Camp to the north in the Everdawn Basin. That isn't anywhere near the Everdawn Volcanoes, is it? They are one and the same, yes. Well, that's fantastic. Volcanoes? Indeed. What a better place to hide than in the most volatile land in all the kingdom. Oh, I know! How about a peaceful meadow? Or a quiet forest? Or some place that doesn't explode every ten minutes? Dust, your friend seems awfully tense. No! I'm fine! Come on, let's go to the Blowy Up Mountains! Really, I'm serious! Fidget, you need to have more faith in me. I'll have faith in you when you have faith in yourself. How about it, huh? Who are you, really? I am... I... Uh... You see? You still haven't figured it out yet! Lizard guy tells you right to your face, and you still don't know! Fidget, please calm down. You mustn't test your friend like this. I just... <sighs> If I'm gonna follow you to the literal end of this world, I need to know who I'm following, and why. I understand, Fidget. You're right. I can't ask you to follow me. But I can. Fidget, you have stood by Dust's side for this entire journey. You have watched him save this world. How can you continue to doubt? I just don't get it! It doesn't matter who he thinks he is. He's Dust! That's who he is! That's who I know. Fidget, please. I can't do this without you. Can you, uh... Can you repeat that? I said I can't do this without you. I'm sorry. I just... Nobody's ever said that to me before. And it won't be the last time, I assure you. Are you ready, Mithrarin? I am. Then we will meet you in the Everdawn Basin. Goodbye, Dust. We'll see you there. Sorry, I haven't really been talking all that much, but there's a lot of dialogue to take in. Also, I was kind of just sticking around in the room, so I just ended up cutting, but yeah. Dust did a fusion of Cassius and Jin. So General Gaius referencing Cassius. This is Cassius in his purest form, and we're a fusion of Cassius's power and Corruption and Jin's justice. General Gaius? What news, Commander? I did not want to believe it, but Cassius is working with the Moonbloods. He has turned against us. That will be for me to decide. Our paths will cross at the Moonblood camp. Of that I am certain. I will speak with him personally. Is that... wise? Our victory is all but assured, Commander. We outnumber them ten to one. We possess superior technology. And we have the element of surprise. 
But why welcome this rogue element? He has already slain your own soldiers. What more proof do you need that he is a traitor to our cause? Cassius is hardly a rogue element, Commander. The Moonbloods have corrupted his mind, forced him to commit these acts against us. Once I can speak with him, once he remembers who he really is, I'm certain he will return to us. But... <clears throat> yes, sir. As you wish. Cassius, my old friend, so long as you draw breath, I will do what I can to save your broken mind. I promise. Well, next time we're going to do some cleanup. And I'll also talk about uh, the problem that I had that came up in this episode, but we'll get to that next time. See you then.